Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. I want people to focus on the date. We're going to go with information known to us right now. Again, it's Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. Let's talk about a big boxing theme. Let's talk about two of the biggest fights that are coming, two of the biggest names, two of the cash cows in the sport. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, just like in boxing, in the world, <clears throat> in the world, we give credit to folks who we like, who might deserve the credit, might not deserve the credit. In other words, folklore takes over. Right? For example, for years, I was here online. I thought Muhammad Ali did not throw a punch in the first round of the first Sonny Liston fight. A, a subscriber contacted me and said, Dwyer, what round did you watch? So, of course, then I watched the round again. And, of course, Ali does start throwing punches about a minute or so into the round. Okay, okay. Well, Mark Twain, <clears throat> great American author, has one of history's better quotes. History doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes, right? Of course, there's no proof that Mark Twain ever uttered that quote, right? Well, what I want people to do is to think about the theme <clears throat> of a huge name. A huge puncher with spectacular chaos who we believe in we might be giving a bit too much credit to just like I was giving Ali a bit too much credit for that first round just like history has given Mark Twain a little bit too much credit for a quote there's no proof of him making right we might be giving too much credit to very talented, heavy punching, highlight friendly fighters. And of course, the Vegas line might be tilted in such a way that there's a huge opportunity, a huge opportunity for skeptical gamblers. The people who in crowds hear the crowd going one way and are thinking to themselves, hey, I, I like the guy, but do I like him this much? Do I like him at this price? Now, as I like to say, profits are the gap between what the public thinks is going to happen and what actually happens. What the public thinks the odds are and what the actual odds are. So let's name arguably the sport's two biggest box office attractions right now outside of Manny Pacquiao right heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua right now he's going off as such a favorite that you're getting a plus 205 on Usyk today August 24th the casino is telling you that Usyk has a less than 33% chance of winning the fight. Right? Keep in mind, Usyk's unbeaten. Keep in mind, Usyk is much more fluid, much better foot speed than Anthony Joshua. Keep in mind, Joshua has looked slow and overmatched in some earlier matches, right? I would argue, and disagree with me, please, in the comment section, if you don't agree. I would argue that he looks overmatched when he gets up off the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko. I would argue that he knocks down Andy Ruiz, the first fight. When Ruiz gets off the canvas and they re-engage, Joshua looks overmatched. You notice that his hand speed isn't high-end hand speed. 
you notice that his defense isn't high-end defense. We just saw a fight, folks, where fast-handed Manny Pacquiao, some of the fastest hands in the sport, as is Andy Ruiz's hand speed, right? We just saw fast-handed Manny Pacquiao leaping in the pocket against Ugas. The fight goes the distance. You never think Ugas is overwhelmed by the hand speed. Like you did with Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua looks clueless, folks. He's getting hit with lefts and rights. Joshua goes down. I believe it's in the third round. Then he goes down again in the later round. Something like the seventh round. He's looking at his corner. He's that confused. Let's just say Joshua can't dampen hand speed. Like Ugas, who has dampened and timed the hand speed to the point where Ugas is throwing body shots. Well, now we get another line that's simply ridiculous. Folks, this morning, after days of waiting, I finally see that the Caleb Plant Canelo betting spread has been posted. And I thought to myself, okay, I know Canelo's a big name. I know Canelo gets a lot of betting tickets. I know Canelo officially Let's be clear here because the word needs to be used given the closeness of multiple Canelo fights. Right? The Eris Landy Lara fight. Razor close. I'm sorry, folks, but I still don't understand the scoring in Canelo's fight against Austin Trout. Let me go one step further, and I understand. <laughs> I'm a gambler who, you know, picked the other guy and Canelo beat him. So I understand. There's some sour grapes here in my kitchen. I get it. But understand, I thought Billy Joe Saunders is highly competitive. At the moment, Saunders gets hit and the world changes. Right before the end of that fight, I thought Saunders is very much in the fight. Right? I, I was looking at the fight and I thought, okay, Billy has actually cracked the code here. Right now, I admit, I wasn't the most unbiased person watching the fight. Right, I got great odds on Billy Joe Saunders. I, I was hoping to collect on great odds. But on my scorecard, I had, and I know many of you did not, right? Because there's a post-fight video with comments here online. But I had Billy Joe slightly ahead of Canelo. In other words, I didn't feel that Canelo was unbeatable, right? There have been times when I've looked at certain fighters. Roy Jones had a stretch where he beats Hall of Famers like Mike McCallum and Virgil Hill. And you thought, my God, how could anyone beat Roy Jones, right? There have been times when you've looked at guys and the guy is in a zone where you say, wow, can anyone beat him, right? In the 1980s, you know, Mike Tyson comes along, the heavyweight division was splintered, and here is Mike mowing down guys. The guys who survived against Mike, Bone Crusher Smith, hugged him to death, right? You started to wonder to yourself, wow, why is a jab even needed in boxing? There have been times when some guys have looked unbeatable. Let's face it. Anthony Joshua, who's already officially lost, and Saul Alvarez, who has already officially lost, right? Both guys, of course, getting decisions in some fights that look close. The Joseph Parker fight for example, right? The Austin Trout, the Aris Landy Lara fights, for example, right? Quite frankly, with Canelo, I thought Kovalev 
was still viable before he got stopped. I thought Kovalev won his share of rounds. I don't believe Anthony Joshua or Canelo are unbeatable. I think the Joshua line is completely preposterous. You're going to give me an unbeaten guy who was unbeaten at Cruiser, who physically is bigger than a whole range of former heavyweight champions, right? It's not like Usyk is 5'8 or something. No, Usyk, folks, is bigger than Joe Fraser, right? He's bigger than Mike Tyson for some of Tyson's fights. He's bigger than Sonny Liston. He's bigger than Ezra Charles. He's bigger than Jack Dempsey. You're going to give him to me and you're going to give me a plus 205? You know, at that point, you've got to say, look, I don't care what the hell everyone else in this sports book's doing. I'm taking this deal and I'll hedge the play. With Joshua by KO, right? We know Joshua and Canelo are two of the hardest punchers. They're blessed punchers in the game. Well, here I thought, okay, what are they going to do to Caleb Plan? Are they going to make him a plus 300? Keep in mind, let's convert odds here. A plus 300 means the guy's supposed to lose three times for every time he wins. That's the three to one, right? That's the, excuse me, <clears throat> that's the plus 300. In other words, he loses three times out of four. So a plus 300 would give Caleb Plant a 25% chance of winning the fight, right? Likewise, a plus 200 means you lose two out of three. So a plus 200 would give Usyk a 33% chance of winning the fight. Keep in mind, they're cutting it down lower than that. You're getting a plus 205 this morning on Usyk. Well, understand, they're not even giving Caleb Plant, unbeaten, unbeaten. They're not even giving Caleb Plant a 25% chance of beating Canelo. <laughs> Folks, this morning you're getting a plus 475 on Caleb Plant. They're giving Caleb Plant something like a 17% chance of beating Canelo. Right, folks, with all due respect, Canelo doesn't look unbeatable to me. I thought in the Floyd Mayweather fight, Mayweather was clearly faster than him. Mayweather clearly moved better than he did. In other words, Canelo's a great fighter. He's, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm not here to argue that. But in terms of his tools, you've seen multiple Canelo fights where Canelo doesn't move as well as his opponent. You've seen fights where Canelo seems to have stamina problems. Look at his fight against Alfredo Angulo, El Pero. Folks, Canelo is taking off portions of that fight. I know El Pero brings it, but my goodness, you know, let's just say I, I haven't seen some elite fighters take off parts of rounds like I've seen Canelo. I thought in the Kovalev fight, and you're fighting a puncher who, for that fight, is a mover. Right? Buddy McGirt gets together with his guy Kovalev, and they say the way to beat Canelo is by moving. Folks, let's not kid ourselves. Kovalev does not move as well as Caleb Plant. Look how long that fight went. Folks, in that fight against Kovalev, not the best mover, Canelo has to take off parts of rounds. He has to take off a round in the later part of the fight. Canelo needs a second win. Dare I say it? Just like Anthony Joshua does. Right? You want to see a fight where Joshua doesn't get a second win? Folks, that's the fight in which he stopped by Andy Ruiz. Let's remember how bad it got.
The referee looks at him and says, come to me. And Joshua looks at the ref puzzled. You don't think in this sport where George Groves gets dazed by Carl Frotch and they wave off the fight, that there aren't a lot of refs who would have waved off the fight right then? Well, getting back to Canelo, so you're telling me there's a guy with a stamina problem against an opponent who has some of the best legs in the sport. Right, folks, this line is a joke. We don't have to be smart like Mark Twain to understand that this bet makes itself. I'm not here trying to look like Einstein. I personally believe 99% of what I say here online is just common sense. The minute you hit the casino and you say, okay, unbeaten Caleb Plant, what odds are they giving him? And if you think in terms of percentages and you say, okay, well, Caleb Plant, even if Canelo's favored, Canelo couldn't be more than 60-40. Then, of course, you find out that they're giving Canelo 83-17. Folks, the bet I like for this fight is the underdog. The odds matter. I like Caleb Plant to win the fight at plus 475, hedged with Canelo by stoppage. Right, folks? I'm not naive. As I've said here online for years, Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport, pound for pound. There's no question about it. I also understand, too, some key Canelo fights went the distance. Danny Jacobs. Wasn't that a 12-round fight? Right? The fights I've named. Austin Trout. Eris Landy Lara. Skilled opponents can take Canelo 12 rounds. No question about it. Right? But betting involves risk. I've got to take risk somewhere. To make this line even, because I'm certainly not going to give my money to the casino on the Canelo side of the play without something, something to shorten the odds. I believe a gambler has to give away Canelo by decision. I need for people to also understand that if, in fact, Plant is able to outmaneuver Canelo and make Canelo look wooden, make Canelo look like he's chasing after him the entire fight, that this fight arguably could be as lopsided as Roy Jones over James Tony was. Let's remember, Jones goes into that fight the underdog. Right, understand. Let's name another. Razor close Canelo fight. Canelo, Gennady Golovkin, the first fight. I'm guessing right now that at least 50% of you, and I'm being conservative, think that Golovkin won that fight. I know I did. Then, of course, you have the second Canelo-Golovkin fight. Let's face it. Even if you think Canelo won that second fight, it was close. Now, how could Canelo have that many close fights and be priced as if he's Ray Robinson at welterweight? Right, folks, the line is completely ridiculous. Right? I understand you're not going to be popular in a casino telling your friends, yeah, I took Callum Plant. <laughs> I took Callum Plant against Canelo. Right? People are going to laugh at you. Are you in it to be popular or are you in it to make money? What I want people to understand too because I know there's a crowd out there that says, you were wrong on Anthony Joshua, right? You were wrong on Joshua against Kubrat Pulev. Okay, okay, fine. Just understand, when you have a hedge, the guy by stoppage, 
Then when a Canelo knocks out a Billy Joe Saunders, another guy I had money on. Right? Because he had superior footwork to Canelo. Right? Bad idea by Saunders to actually decide he was going to fight in the pocket, leaning over. Not the best move. Right? Against a fighter with an uppercut. Not the best move. But, understand, when you have a hedge, you have protection. In other words, I did think Kubrat Pulev was going to give a fighter who got stopped by Andy Ruiz problems. Even though Pulev was, of course, older. Big underdog. You know what? The fact that Joshua got the stoppage allowed me to survive. I didn't lose money on that fight. In fact, what you'll find out is when you have <clears throat> this much vig to work with, in other words, when the casino is giving you a plus 475 on the underdog, you can structure the bet so you win if the underdog wins or if the favorite wins by stoppage, right? And so, let me just say, I don't know how many times in boxing we're going to look at a big man who looks like he has everything going for him. Size against some smaller guy, right? Jess Willard against Mike Tyson's hero. The man who wore black, Jack Dempsey, right? Or a Michael Spinks, right? Not even a cruiserweight who became heavyweight champ. This is a light heavy who jumps to heavyweight champion. Beats Larry Holmes, who was unbeaten at the time. You remember, Michael Spinks fights Jerry Cooney. And many people thought, well, Cooney's too big. Cooney hits hard for a heavyweight. There was an early stoppage in that fight. The smaller, more agile guy got it. Let me tell you a secret to Caleb Plant. Well, let me name three secrets. First, he has an explosive left hook. The fight to look at is the Mike Lee fight. Right? Plant, who is fast. He's not just coordinated with great legs. He's fast. Plant is simply too fast for Mike Lee. Right? Plant can lead with that left hook. He's just too fast. He's elusive. You have to try to find Plant. Then Plant can pivot, come in with that left hook. Understand, Canelo's left hook is just one of two great left hooks in this fight. Let's have two other secrets on plan. I have no proof other than my two eyes. I believe he's inverted. So he's really a right-handed guy fighting out of a southpaw stance. No, excuse me. He's a southpaw <laughs> fighting out of a right-handed stance. This does get confusing. So that opens up the third secret. I believe Plant's right hand is underdeveloped. He's fighting out of an orthodox stance, but he's really a lefty. Think Oscar De La Hoya. Canelo's a technician. Canelo is a left hook artist. I believe Canelo is going to come in, try to land the left hook, right? be willing to trade. Canelo will be willing to take Plant's right hand, even though Plant is fighting out of a right hand stance, to trade punches. Right? I'm sure Canelo feels this right hand of Plant's is underdeveloped. I'll let him hit me with his if he allows me to hit him with mine. I don't believe Plant is ever going to accept that deal. Because I believe Plant knows he does not have a lot of power in that right hand. In fact, to me, 
and again, I have no proof on this, but let me just say this. Boxing is a house of mirrors, right? If you go looking for official sources to hear actual reports on a fighter's condition, you might be chasing for fool's gold, right? Because this is a sport where we don't find out that Joe Fraser was blind in one eye until after his career, right? This is a sport where we still don't know really how Errol Spence was after the car crash. We certainly don't know whether Errol Spence was in a routine eye exam before the Manny Pacquiao fight, before learning that he had retinal problems, right? That story's been reported a thousand different ways, right? Fighters are coached into giving opaque answers, right? We've come back from worse, right? What does that mean? I'm just telling you, think for yourself. I've watched enough Caleb Plant fights where I look at his right hand and I think something's not right with that right hand. So I believe Plant is a guy who's going to be on the move. I believe Plant knows his secrets. I believe Plant knows Canelo has an explosive left hook. I believe Plant can look at the Kovalev film and figure out how to avoid that left hook for most of the fight. I like Khaled Plant at the plus 475. To me, professional fighting, when you see a guy who's a champion, who's unbeaten, who's beaten guys like Uskadege, right, who has sparred in the past with folks like Errol Spence, right, Khaled Plant is well connected. This is not some surprise guy who happens to be champion. Look at his career. He gets his championship relatively early, right? This is a very skilled customer. Now, in a professional sport, when you're talking about an unbeaten champion, I think it's incredibly naive. I think it's a sign of disrespect. If gamblers are then going to say, oh, that champion only has a 17% chance of winning a fight, against Canelo, who's been tested. Right, let's go even further, folks. I've seen fights where Canelo's been hit hard. Right, he has a chin. Right, I don't mean to diss Canelo. I think Canelo is a clear first ballot Hall of Famer. But are you serious here with this line, knowing that Canelo got clocked by Golovkin, for example, right? We've had fights where Canelo has been hit. Alfredo Angulo landed some shots on Canelo, right? And of course, Canelo, and I know officially it was something like a majority decision or something like that, but you know in your heart that Floyd Mayweather went out and won at least the first six rounds against Canelo. Right, there have been some fights, folks, where Canelo has been thoroughly outboxed. Let me also say, too, that in a competitive sport like boxing, let's remember, even greats like Sugar Ray Robinson lost to Jake LaMotta. I know times were different back then. I know there was a weight gap and stuff like that. But just understand, you go back through history, great fighters, Max Smelling, beats Joe Lewis. By the time we learn about Jack Johnson, he has some losses, right? Archie Moore had some losses before he hits the public light. Even the unbeaten fighters, the Castillo Mayweather first fight. How did your scorecard read? I'm hearing the La Starza Marciano first fight is questionable. Let's remember, too, Marciano, unbeaten, we view him as bulletproof. The referee goes over to him. He's getting beaten up by Ezard Charles. 
to the point where the referee says to him, look, you're going to have to show me something this round. Right? Knockouts cause amnesia. Marciano is able to close the deal. We forget about. We forget about those tense moments. Right? So let me just say, a minus 475 on an unbeaten fighter <laughs> who's the champion at 168, who's fighting a guy who's been tested in weight classes smaller than 168, right? What was that Canelo Austin Trout weight class? Right, folks? You don't believe me? You don't want to watch the fight? Look at the CompuBox numbers for the Austin Trout Canelo fight. Right, folks? Caleb Plant is much more mobile than Prime Austin Trout. Right? If Canelo is unable to corner and land on Caleb Plant, this could be a big upset. Let me give some mitigating factors, some things you need to consider. The fight is in Las Vegas. Understand, Las Vegas is a town that rewards people who have been good to it. Right? Las Vegas is a repeat player in the boxing business. They love fighters who can fill casinos with gamblers. They love fighters who can headline a marquee, draw people in, have folks in town who aren't even going to the fight, feeling like they're in a festive atmosphere. Canelo has delivered for Las Vegas for years, right? If there's going to be a scoring bias here, it's going to be in favor of Canelo. Even with the scoring bias, as we've learned from the Manny pacquiao Ugas fight, there's only, there's only so much the judges could do. In sum, I like plan, plus 475. The odds make it a no-brainer for me. I'll hedge it with Canelo by stoppage. But I need for everyone watching this video to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance and Canelo gets a decision, as he did in the Golovkin rematch, as he did in the Arislandi Lara fight, you lose it all. That's the risk I'm willing to take. Hey, this is the gambling part of the internet. There is risk involved. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.